First News continues to look for solutions to violence on our streets. Tonight, we continue our conversation with Mahoning County Drug Court Judge Jack Durkin. Here's WKBN's D. Crawford to take us in depth. Joining me today is Judge Jack Durkin, and we're continuing our conversation, and we are going to try to address this whole issue of conflict resolution. Your thoughts, what's going on in uh, your courtroom and throughout the state to, again, resolving or at least tackling this problem of violence. I read a fabulous book, um, Fist, Sticks, Knives and Guns, and um, its premise is that from a very early age, our children are fighting to survive. Our children are fighting in neighborhoods, um, trying to establish their own territory, um, how to get through um, and live and literally um, we need to do a better job as a society we need to do a better job in our community we need to do a better job in our court system um, to provide education in terms of identifying strong youth children who can become peacemakers um, who can develop safety plans um, because they're seeing conflict every single day and we are not providing them the tools necessary in order to survive and in order to thrive. When we talked, we talked about the pendulum swing from education, uh, which is knowledge, prevention, to treatment and the dollars that are being spent in treatment and we've been fighting this war now for years. Um, and my sense is that we're not winning this war. You're in drug court, Judge. What are you seeing and what do you feel we could improve upon? I just met with a law enforcement officer last week and signed a search warrant and he looked at me and he had a, a very, very grim look on his face and he said, we've lost this war. He said, there are three to four to five people standing behind every single person we arrest who are providing drugs to our children, to, who are providing drugs on our street. So in my opinion, although treatment dollars, although drug courts, although treatment courts are incredibly necessary and beneficial, we need to shift some of that pendulum and provide more money and more dollars to education and prevention to our children we can't wait too long to educate them on the dangers that these drugs uh, instill. We're seeing our prisons being filled, uh, and that's based a lot on, number one, quote unquote, let's get them off the street, make our streets safe because we're putting them in jail. But you just mentioned the fact you send one, there's two or three. It's, it's becoming employment opportunities for many because that's all they know. There's a lot of money to be made. And are you seeing what I'm hearing is that many of these individuals that are providers are not users? Unfortunately. Um, they have a smarts not to use their own product. Yes, yes. And to insulate themselves um, in layers in terms of the people that they have distributing. So in large part, the people at the very top of the food chain so to speak, the drug chain, um, do not use their own product. They're, they're smart enough not to. The people that got caught up in it, the people who are maybe dealing a small amount to support their substance use disorder are those that we need to offer treatment to. Again, I thank you as we continue our conversation. And tomorrow we are going to talk about the continuum of service and the need for education. I'm Dee Crawford, Community Affairs Director, WKVN.